Now, the Nicola Bully case, it really has gripped the nation in the most extraordinary mm. way. How on earth can this woman simply have gone missing? All sorts of private investigators and TikTokers not adding much good, I don't think, to the whole story. But why on earth did the police decide to tell us that Miss Bully had a drink problem, a menopause problem, uh, that they visited her on the 10th of January? Why did, we need, why did we need to know this personal information? Was it right that we were told it? Look, very unusual for police to disclose that information. Uh, my sense is I think there are two possible reasons. The first is that the information may have been circulating on social media and was going to be picked up by the press, by reporters. Um, I know how reporters work and journalists work. They will have been combing that area, looking for tidbits, looking yeah. for angles and so on. And it is possible that it was going to emerge. Subsequently, the family, Nic Nicola Bully, have made a statement explaining that they knew that the police were going to put that information out there, saying that they, you know, Nicola wouldn't have wanted the information out there, but they want all the speculation to stop. So I think that may have had something to do with it. I think the second reason is because I think the police have sort of boxed themselves into a bit of a corner. You know, a couple of weeks ago, they said their main working theory was that Nicola had gone into the water. Yeah. And I think that they have come under increasing pressure to try and justify that and explain why that's their main line uh, of inquiry and so on to the exclusion potentially of others. And I think by saying she's high risk and by saying that she's got an alcohol problem and she's had complications with the menopause and so on may have sort of added a factor that has led them towards that theory that she's she's gone into the water. And so I think that may have been also a contributory factor. I think that was potentially, I think the way that they've done it, the way the messaging, the communications, I think has been poor in this and case. And that again brings into question the integrity of the police and the ability of the police to do a good job. Absolutely. This is a time when, you know, trust in the police, confidence in the police has really taken a serious mm. knock because of, you know, uh, episodes in the Met that have been very well documented. Here is an inquiry, high profile, very difficult. I actually think from everything I hear from the police and the information they've put out there, they're doing a thorough inquiry. They're, you know, consulting all the experts you'd expect them to consult, tidal experts, environmental mm -hmm. experts, search mm -hmm. analysts, and so on. But I think the communications and the messaging hasn't been consistent. We weren't told earlier that, that Nicola had any health concerns at all. An image or uh, was painted of, of something quite different, really. Mm. And I think that uh, and also the police boxing themselves into that corner with that theory about the river, um, not making themselves available, I think, as, as much as they should have been, I think has been very difficult. And communication is so important. You've studied home affairs for decades. How common is it for people to go missing and never be found again? Pretty uncommon. I mean, yeah. there are thousands of missing persons reports yeah. every year. Yeah. The majority of people turn up within 48 hours. Um, there's a, a very small percentage that aren't found after a couple of weeks. Mm. Sadly, Nicola is in that category. Uh, and obviously, the longer it goes on, you know, the bleaker, I suppose, the prospects get that she's going to be found safe and well. I guess that's right. Danny, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on GB News.